I've heard about virtual reality and how it could be used in the classroom, but what equipment do I need to get started? I'm gonna give you all the basics that you need to know to be confident when you talk about VR. So there's three basic camps, high-end, mid-range, and budget. Most teenagers that I've talked to that have a familiarity with VR already are most familiar with the high-end consumer virtual reality equipment. These are systems like the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift S. In each of these systems, there tends to be one remote control for each hand and a large goggles set that you put on your face. The user can walk around in physical space, they can bend over and pick things up and reach way up high and jump up and down, and all of that physical movement of their body will be translated also in the virtual world that they're seeing. You'll find the most beautiful graphics on these high-end models, but the trick is, in addition to the hefty price tag of 400 to 1,000 or more dollars for the headset alone, each user has to be connected to a very powerful, expensive gaming computer. Per person, thousands of dollars. Of course, this is not realistic for using VR in the classroom, so I typically don't recommend the HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, or the Oculus Rift S to teachers looking to use VR in their classrooms. On the way other side of the spectrum, you've got the Google Cardboard and Friends, the low budget versions. A smartphone that you stick into a piece of cardboard or plastic, and the user will put up to their face and be able to look around. They can see in 360, meaning just like in all VR, if you look over this way, you'll see something different in the world, and if you look over this way, you'll see something different over here, but there's no remote control. There's typically very little, if any way, for students to interact with the space that they find themselves. Picture a movie but stuck to your head and you can look at different angles to see different parts of that movie. Sometimes these headsets will have a button or two on the goggles themselves. This solution tends to be very uninteractive for the students. They quickly get bored. As educators who believe in empowering students as creators, as we do in student-centered learning, this isn't that revolutionary or aligned with our pedagogical goals. It's just a flashy piece of plastic that students can put on their face and get excited about for the first 10 minutes of using it. In between the high end and the budget is of course the mid range. These are things like the Oculus Go, the Oculus Quest, or the Samsung Gear VR. They typically come with one remote and they're self-contained. They don't require a wire connected to an expensive computer. They do offer a good balance of visual detail for the price and interactivity. Students with their remote, they can often move themselves around the world via teleportation and they can interact with the space in various ways as the software allows them to. When teachers ask me what is the best investment to bring meaningful VR into student-centered classrooms, I always tell them the Oculus Go or some hardware in that mid-range of equipment. These run about $200 a piece and you only need a couple headsets in a classroom to get started. In this mid-range, students can't physically walk around, they need to be seated or remain in one space when they're standing, but they can still interact with the environment around them. Since it doesn't require a long leash of a cord to a computer for each student, it's a great way to balance interactivity and visual detail with the realities of space and budgets in a school. While they can't stand up and walk around, that's probably better for me in my classroom anyway. I don't need a group of students who can't see each other walking around and running into things or each other. Something really important to note is that the less visual detail your hardware and the software on that hardware provides for your students, the more likely it is that they're gonna get motion sick or what we call VR sickness, headaches, nausea, general discomfort, which of course we don't want our students experiencing in the classroom under any circumstances. That's another piece of the puzzle to think about when you're considering the different virtual reality hardware options. Anything in that mid-range that allows for interactivity is self-contained, meaning it doesn't require a computer, and allows students to collaborate in meaningful ways, that's the way to go. Now you're equipped with a working foundation of all these different factors that can help you be more confident and knowledgeable in your ask for virtual reality to your administrators. If you'd like to learn more about using virtual reality in your classroom, I work for Redshift Education. We build virtual reality content for student-centered classrooms like yours. My name is Maria Jernigan. Thank you so much for your time and attention today, and don't forget to keep leveling up your 21st century classroom. See you next time.